facts about Jesus that many do not know. Number 1. Jesus warned of hell. The Gospel of Matthew is a manual for discipleship, containing five major discourses addressed to sons of the kingdom. Yet most of Jesus' teaching on hell is to be found in the book of Revelation, and all but two of his warnings are addressed to his disciples. Revelation sets two destinies before Christians. They will either be raised with Christ and share his reign, ending up in the new universe, or they will lose their inheritance in the kingdom and end up in hell. The Sermon on the Mount, which blesses those persecuted because of Jesus, goes on to speak of hell and concludes with a reminder that there are two destinies. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather, be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 33 Therefore the one who confesses and acknowledges me before men as Lord and Savior, affirming a state of oneness with me. That one I will also confess and acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But the one who denies and rejects me before men, that one I will also deny and reject before my Father who is in heaven. The Olivet Discourse in Matthew chapters 24 and 25 condemns slothful and careless servants of the Master it being assigned a place with the hypocrites and thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 24, verse 51. And will cut him in two and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping, over sorrow and pain, and grinding of teeth, over distress and anger. Matthew chapter 25, verse 30. And throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness, in that place of grief and torment. There will be weeping over sorrow and pain, and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Number six, His family's reaction. There was clearly tension between Jesus and the rest of the family. At one time, his family came to take him home and lock him away, because they thought he was out of his mind. Mark chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. When his own family heard this, they went to take custody of him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, Satan, and he is driving out the demons by the power of the ruler of the demons. So he called them to himself and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? Finding a large crowd surrounding him, they sent a message through to Jesus. Your mother and brothers and sisters have come to take you home. He replied, My mother? Who is my mother? My brothers and sisters? Who are my brothers and sisters? Anybody who does the will of my Father in heaven is my mother, my brother, and my sister. His family thought this was crazy talk, and Mary felt hurt by the implications. Number three. Jesus was accused of doing miracles under the authority of Beelzebul. The Bible lets us know that Jesus performed various powerful miraculous works. Luke chapter 11 verses 14 to 16. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus continued to perform miraculous works that confirmed his identity. When he dispelled a demon, some of his adversaries accused him of acting under the authority of Beelzebul, the king of the demons which is another name for Satan. Others insisted on a sign from heaven to prove his authority, as if his miracles weren't enough. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. 
If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. Luke chapter 11 verses 17 to 19 Jesus responded by pointing out how absurd their accusations were. If Satan drove out his own demons, he would be working against himself. The devil will be defeated one day, but not because he defeats himself, and he will be defeated at the hands of King Jesus. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Furthermore, if Jesus was driving out spirits by the power of Satan, by what power were the religious leaders' followers driving them out? They couldn't condemn Jesus without condemning themselves. Luke chapter 11 verse 20 But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. If, on the other hand, he casts out demons with the power of God's finger, he must be the Messiah who will bring his kingdom. Jesus declared himself the one with authority over Satan, the strong man. Even though Satan had subjugated people, Jesus demonstrated his superiority by defeating his evil forces, releasing captives, and dividing Satan's plunder. There can be no neutrality when it comes to Jesus Christ. Jesus is either the Messiah or Satan, but he cannot simply be a teacher or a miracle worker. Number a manger is a feeding trough. Forget about the wooden prop seen in Christmas pageants. The manger served as a feeding station for animals. In that part of the world, animals were kept in caves, and feeding troughs were made out of stone. So Jesus was probably born in a cave around Bethlehem somewhere, and laid in a stone trough. The birth of Jesus is nothing short of a miracle, and even though many of us have heard the story many times, we can learn something new every time. Number nine. The birth of Jesus was similar to that of Moses. During the time of Jesus' birth, there was a massacre of the innocents, similar to Moses. Herod gave orders to execute all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under, after the wise men failed to report back to him about Jesus' birth. Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 21 Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, 
Take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Number He never traveled more than 200 miles. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. Jesus, however, sent out his disciples to preach the message. He sent out 72 in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. The 70 sent out. Now after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them out ahead of him, two by two into every city and place where he was about to go. He was saying to them, The harvest is abundant, for there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation. But the workers, those available to proclaim the message of salvation, are few. Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go your way. Listen carefully. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Mm -hmm.